Hi, Shayna. So I wanted to talk about something that's been on my mind recently, and that's the feminine gaze or the female gaze. As a young woman, I think there are certain movies that speak louder to me than others. Um, You know how much I love Pride and Prejudice in all of its adaptations and how much I love Jane Austen. And I think when we're talking about the female gaze, the question is, why? And why does it speak more to me than the romance depicted in movies like James Bond? I mean, there's a clear answer there. We all know what the male gaze is. I've watched quite a few video essays and I've read some articles recently about the male gaze versus the female gaze. So I'm just going to summarize what I've learned and I'll link everything um, that I've read and watched in the, uh, below so you can check those out if you want. One of my favorites, just by the way, was Wit and Folly's video and it was called Feminine Gaze and Transformative Stories. The male gaze was famously coined by Laura Mulvey in her 1973 essay titled Narrative Cinema and Visual Pleasure, in which she used psychoanalytic theory to understand sexuality in film as it demonstrates the way the unconscious of patriarchal society has structured film form. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but Mulvey defined the male gaze and outlined three elements of what it entails. In section three of her essay, titled Woman as Image, Man as Bearer of the Look, Mulvey wrote, in a world ordered by sexual imbalance, pleasure in looking has been split between active male and passive female. The determining male gaze projects its fantasy onto the female figure, which is styled accordingly. In their traditional exhibitionist role, women are simultaneously looked at and displayed, with their appearance coded for strong visual and erotic impact so that they can be said to connote to be looked atness. Women displayed as sexual objects is the leitmotif of erotic spectacle. She holds the look, plays to signify the male desire. So it's all about pleasure in looking at another person as an erotic object. And we've seen this like since the dawn of time in movies. I'm sure you're familiar with that sort of head to toe pan up shot of the woman before every scene begins, marking her legs in the shape of her body as desirable to the male gaze before we even get to see her face. Mulvey identified three main ways where the male gaze affects film. Number one, the camera and how it captures and objectifies. Number two, the audience and how it watches and inflicts its gaze and objectifies the characters. Number three, the characters and how they interact and objectify each other. Basically, women in film are either the objects of male characters in their movie, objects of the audience for pleasure, or both. In 2021, a lot of people are starting to understand what the female gaze really is. It's not the parallel opposite of the male gaze. It's a lot more than that. In most work people have done on this topic, Magic Mike is used as the perfect example of what we might think the female gaze is, but what is in fact just a bunch of men being objectified for their bodies while they strip on stage. In one article I read about the female gaze by Tori Telfer in Vulture, different female cinematographers were interviewed and asked about the female gaze. She defines the female gaze with their various opinions. What is the female gaze then? It's emotional and intimate. It sees people as people. It seeks to empathize rather than to objectify or not. It's respectful. It's technical. It hasn't had a chance to develop. It tells the truth. It involves physical work. It's feminine and unashamed. It's part of an old-fashioned gender binary. It should be studied and developed. It should be destroyed. It will save us. It will hold us back. 
despite some of its controversies, one of the only thorough explanations of the female gaze out there so far was discussed in a masterclass at TIFF by Joey Soloway, who is, I believe, the creator of the show Transparent. I highly recommend watching it, and I'm going to link it. They adapted Mulvey's three-point structure on the male gaze and outlined three main ways female gaze affects film. Number one, the feeling camera. Capturing feeling, communicating a feeling seeing in the story. Oh, your perfume. Yes. It's nice. Thank you. Harge bought me a bottle years ago before we were married and I've been wearing it ever since. Harge is your husband? Mm-hmm. Well, technically, we, we're divorcing. I'm sorry. Don't be. And do you live alone, Therese Palavet? I do. Well, there's Richard. He'd like to live with me. Oh, no, it's nothing like that. I mean, he'd like to marry me. I see. And would you like to marry him? Well... I barely even know what to order for lunch. And your meals. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. I'm starved. Bon appetit. What do you do on Sunday? Nothing in particular. What do you do? Oh, nothing lately. I mean, if you'd like to come visit me sometime, you're welcome to. At least there's some pretty country around where I live. Would you like to come visit me this Sunday? Yes. <laughs> what a strange girl you are. Why? Flung out of space. Number two, the gaze to gaze, showing how it feels to be the object of the gaze and saying, this is how it feels to be seen. Vous ne m'avez pas blessé. Si, je le vois. Quand vous êtes ému, vous faites comme ça avec votre main. Vraiment. Et quand vous êtes embarrassé, vous mordez vos lèvres. Et quand vous êtes agacé, vous ne sciez pas. Vous savez tout. Pardonnez-moi, je n'aimerais pas être à votre place. Mais nous sommes à la même place. Exactement à la même place. Venez ici. Venez. Approchez-vous. Regardez. Si vous me regardez, qui je regarde moi Quand vous ne savez pas quoi dire, vous baissez la tête et vous touchez votre front. Quand vous perdez le contrôle, vous haussez les sourcils. Et quand vous êtes troublé, vous respirez par la bouche. Number three, the returning gaze, or returning the gaze. I see you seeing me and saying, I don't want to be the object any longer. This also generates empathy from the audience. You know, I just, I just feel, I just feel like women, they, they have minds 
and they have souls as well as just hearts and they've got ambition and they've got talent as well as just beauty and I'm so sick of people saying that that love is just all a woman is fit for I'm so sick of it but I'm I'm so lonely I went on the internet and looked for a few notable and recent uh, works that use the female gaze. Um, and most of these are from the subreddit Ask Women, but also from other things that I found online. And I haven't seen all of them. I want to say that when researching this topic, Portrait of a Lady on Fire is what people talked about the most, and I highly recommend watching some of the videos that I'll have linked below about that. Um, also, I think you should watch the movie, it's really good, you'd really like it. And the list goes on of all the different movies with the female gaze. I want to talk about Pride and Prejudice and Emma, because this is my video, so why the hell not? There are so many things about Joe Wright's 2005 adaptation of Pride and Prejudice that appeal to me. I mean, you've got the soundtrack, um, the stunning visuals, the actors, the costume, which I believe won an Academy Award. Um, but you know me, I'm just a humble girl. I just watch for the plot and the plot alone. <laughs> But how does this story attract the female gaze? The opening line in Jane Austen's novel, it's a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of good fortune must be in want of a wife, it turns out to be ironic, since the story essentially follows the Bennett women and their endeavors in finding husbands for their own security. It's a story about women, and one can assume Austen wrote it for women as well. But how does this translate on screen? An article called Colin Firth's Shirt, Jane Austen and the Rise of the Female Gaze by Megan Garber discusses the female gaze in BBC's 1995 Pride and Prejudice miniseries, which I've also seen. It's very good. Um, Shayna, I know you're not a Pride and Prejudice fan, but trust me when I tell you this scene right here is very well loved. Garber discusses how this adaptation highlights the sexual desires of women as normal people, stating that it placed women, their perspectives, their concerns, their humor, their desires, their rich inner lives, at the center of the story. It took for granted a kind of radical mutuality. It assumed a world in which women are meant not merely to be looked upon, but also to do the looking. It is the women here who do the bulk of the watching, and it is the men here who are generally the objects of their lookings. They are mysteries to be solved, puzzles whose pictures re reveal themselves with patience and time, piece by piece. I think this applies to the 2005 adaptation as well. For the most part, the perspective of this story is Lizzie's. Even in the very first scenes, we see how it feels for her to be objectified by potential suitors when Darcy calls her. Perfectly tolerable, I dare say. You're not handsome enough to tempt me. You'd better return to your partner and enjoy her smiles. You're wasting your time with me. She claims it doesn't bother her, but this follows through the whole prejudice theme of the story, that she's only human and she can't let it go. And Darcy is an object of desire, but not exactly in the same way that Magic Mike would be. <laughs> he is desirable through his vulnerability and humanity, hence the hand scene. And if we connect it back to Soloway's criteria of the female gaze, he is seeing her for who she is, and she is seeing him back. May I see you back to the village? No. 
very fond of walking. Yes. Yes, I know. There's also a way that the feminine gaze shows women objectifying men, or women objectifying women, or people objectifying people, in a different light. It's not just a focus on their bodies, but on their entire person. Now, if we turn to Autumn de Wilde's 2020 adaptation of Emma, similar things are happening. There's so much pining. <laughs> the characters in this story are very different from Pride and Prejudice, but the subtleties of seeing feeling and being seen are at play. I saw a Tumblr post um, about the character of Mr. Knightley the other day that really stuck with me when I was thinking about this topic, so I'm gonna insert it here and I'll put the link below. The female gaze in this movie gives me butterflies every time, especially when it comes to the character of Mr. Knightley. He's so human, and there are moments that are shot in such a way that is intimate with the audience, giving us an idea of who he really is in his day-to-day -day life. We see the intricacies of his routine, and how he banters with Emma and fumbles with their relationship. I think most importantly, Knightley really sees Emma and acknowledges her entire personality. He emotes longing, disappointment, frustration, earnestness, empathy, and understanding. Sorry, quick change of scenery. <laughs> this man even cries on a few occasions. And my personal favorite scene is when he's in so much inner turmoil that he collapses on the floor while tearing off all of his suffocating layers of clothing. And the butlers just kind of like, just peace out. The same goes for Emma and other women in the story. They're all really humanized, even in such a restrictive period for women. There's one moment, um, I'll insert it, that I found really endearing and kind of humanizing for Emma in particular. Um, <laughs> Emma and Knightley move freely between the subjective and the objective, which is why there's a nice fluidity to it within the female gaze. Hello, it's Megan from the future. Um, I wanted to talk about the men in this movie and how ridiculous they are. For example, Mr. Elton is a big fucking creep. And, uh, Mr. Woodhouse is just a dramatic bee. It's a pity Mr. Weston ever thought of it. You must have had a shocking walk. Not at all, sir. It's a beautiful evening. You must have found it very damp and dirty. Yes, sir. A chill drop. Chill. The screen. Bartholomew, Charles, make haste. No, not that. This one. So, we love that. He's a king. And um, this moment right here. What a pity you did not bring your music. I can recollect the two. So I just thought I'd put those in for funsies. Okay, bye. So that's all I really have to say about that. Um, tell me what you think about the female gaze. There's so much to be said about it. I'm just kind of scratching the surface, like I said before. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video and all of those sexy hand scenes. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.